Welcome back to the Jink channel everybody. We got some more spoiler videos coming for you right now. And I believe we've had a couple of name changes on the last couple of spoilers we looked at four days ago. Uh, Red, Crap, Red Cap Melee is the one mana instant that has a punishment if it's a non-red. And Spectre Shriek is a one mana sorcery in black that uh, punishes you if it's a non-black card that you focus on. But that's, I think, the only major changes that I've noticed um, in the previous spoilers up to this point. So we're going to start trucking through the rest of these here and see if there's anything really interesting, fun, or janky that we can look into. So the first new one is Fierce Witch Stalker, another wolf. So Wolf Tribal is happening, I think, even if it may not be a tier one deck or anything i know people are going to be brewing it and they're going to have a lot of fun with it we got a four four wolf with trample for four that creates a food token when it enters the battlefield at common it's pretty good wolf's quarry six mana sorcery create three one one green boar tokens with when this creature dies create a food token that's super flavorful i love it that's really good i like how you're creating three bo three uh, three little pigs, and you get the big bad wolf chasing after them and turns them into food. That's pretty awesome. Let's see, Folio of Fancies, two mana blue artifact. Players have no maximum hand size, so you and your opponent. XX, each player draws X cards. Two blue tap. Each opponent puts a number of cards equal to the number of cards in their hand from the top of their library into their graveyard. So it's definitely a mill card that could make it into some self-mill decks as a one or two of potentially. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to be moving to where we're going to be seeing a whole lot of uh, a lot of milling opponent decks though. Stone Coil Serpent, Reach, Trample, Protection from Multicolor. So cool serpent enters the battle filled with X11 counters on it. Comment CMC is X. They've got it on here twice. I guess this is the standard. At first I was thinking this is this has gotta be a reprint, but this is definitely not a reprint. That is not what I thought it was. That's a pretty darn good artifact. I think that's um I think that's a great artifact card, actually. I like it a lot. What's the flavor text on it? Cast out of great Garenbrig for his crimes. In or turn to fey magic to fashion the perfect weapon for his revenge. Nice. Nice. I like it. Faber Elder. This is the extended art. Three mana. Selesnia and colorless. Vigilant. Gets 1-1 one, one for each color among permanents you control. Tap for each color among permanents you control. Add 1 mana of that color. This looks like a perfect fit for a Niv Misery Born deck. That has me pretty excited. I like that a lot. Bone Crush a Giant. A 3 mana 4-3. The adventure is Stomp. It's instant. 2 mana. Damage can't be rented this turn. Stomp deals 2 damage to any target. Whenever Bone Crusher Giant becomes the target of a spell, Bone Crusher Giant deals two damage to that spell's controller. That's a solid red, red everything spell and creature. Um, it reminds me a lot of uh, the spell we had back during the uh, original Theros block that people used in their red decks or burn decks to skull crack. It was skull crack. It was Return to Ravnica, I think. Um, and it would prevent you from being able to gain life that turn. Um, and then it would deal like two or three damage. It's pretty cool. I like it. Vantress Gargoyle. Two mana flying five four? Can't attack unless defending player has seven or more cards in their graveyard. Can't block unless you have four or more cards in hand. Tap. Each player puts the top card of their library into their graveyard. So that's a really strong blocker early game. Wow. That can become a ridiculous attacker late game. Whether you're trying to mill the cut the opponent or they're just naturally getting cards put into the graveyard, that's not a hard it's not terribly hard to get seven or more cards in the graveyard, especially with the ability to mill one each turn right there. That's nice. The Magic Mirror. Oh my goodness. 
Whoa. Six colorless, three blue, legendary artifact, mythic. One less to cast for each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard. You have no maximum hand size. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a knowledge counter on the magic mirror. Then draw a card for each knowledge counter on the magic mirror. Oh my goodness, I cannot wait to play with that in a storm deck. Oh man, that's going to be great. So great. Dance of the Mance. X, white, blue, sorcery. Return up to X target artifact and or non-R enchantment cards, each with converted mana cost X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. If X is six or more, these permanents are 4-4 four, four creatures in addition to their other types. That's uh, definitely more support for like a Esper, Tezzeret, um artifact build. Or any kind of uh, enchantment base prison build or deck or something like that. I'm sure there's probably some really crazy janky things you can do if you go into more colors. Um, the uh, three mana enchantment that gives non-tokens Riot comes to mind. If you have that on the battlefield and then play this for six or more then you get to give all of them haste and you can just win immediately that way. That's pretty cool. I might have to do that. Four colors is actually pretty easy to do in standard, even with the uh, check lands disappearing at rotation. Iron Crag Feet. One colorless, three mana. Add seven red mana to your mana pool. You can cast only one more spell this turn. Oh my. Oh. Um, the greatest challenge isn't the stifling heat, but the crushing weight of those who failed before. So this is one that everybody was saying could be a reprint of Stone Forger, a similar card. Even so. So adding seven red, what can you do with seven red? Seven red would allow you to If you had one blue mana in your pool, you could play Epic Experiment, or you could, with one of the mana, say you did this on turn five, you could, uh, oh, you could do, uh, wow, I'm drawing a blank, the uh, Electrodominance. X equals six. Boom. Play this. Um, play this. Ultra Dominance X equals six. I don't know if you could cheat in something that way, but that'd be pretty cool. Some sort of fireball for seven mana, which would be like six damage would be awesome. There's a lot you could do with that, even if you're only able to play one more spell that turn. I like it. Let's see what the extended art looks like. Oh, that's, that that extended art is way better. Because it's zoomed in, too. That's really nice. Revenge of Ravens. Four mana enchantment. Whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, that creature's controller loses one life and you gain one life. So, an uncommon four mana. Not... Dealing three damage, gaining you three life immediately. Oath of Kaya. I guess if you really wanted to run Oath of Kaya and Revenge of the Ravens in the same deck, you could. Mirror Maid. Three mana enchantment. Two blue and a colorless. You may have Mirror Maid enter the battlefield as a copy of any artifact or an enchantment on the battlefield. That's actually pretty cool. Making copies of... Uh, some pretty nasty artifacts, too. And some pretty nasty enchantments. It's got... I think it has more reach outside of standard, but it definitely would be pretty cool. Ferocity of the Wilds. Three mana, red enchantment. Attacking non-human creatures you control get plus one and trample. That's pretty good enchantment. You can see that being... Uh, Maybe a one of currently, like, because 
the Rhythm of the Wild is so much better than that in general, I think. Grumgully the Generous. Three mana, red green, colorless, goblin shaman, legendary, three three. Each other non human creature you control enters battlefield with an additional one one counter on it. Oh, I like that guy. I like that guy a lot. Huh. <laughs> I like him. He's pretty cool. Mistford River Turtle. Four mana turtle, one five. Whenever it attacks, another target attacking non-human creature can't be blocked this turn. Okay, so it's like you're riding the turtle into combat, and the turtle's your mount. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, let's see what's next. Red Cap Raiders, so some more goblins. Three mana, three two goblin warrior. Whatever Red Cap Raiders attacks, you may tap and untap to non-human creature you control. If you do, Red Cap Raiders gets 1-1 one, one and trample until end of turn. Okay, so you play him three... You go to attack on four, you tap whatever creature you played that turn, and make it a 4-3 with Trample until end of turn. Seems pretty good. Barge in. One mana instant target. Attacking creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Each attacking non-human creature gains Trample until end of turn. Not bad. Not bad. I like it. Uh, Lock Dragon, 4 mana, hybrid is it, 3-2, flying, it's a dragon, whenever Lock Dragon enters the battlefield or attacks, you may discard a card, if you do, draw a card, so it's pretty good, I like it, I'm liking a lot of these today, oh here's a 7 mana spell that you could cast uh, on the same turn that you cast the Iron Crag Feet. You can go Iron Crag Feet into Sundering Stroke. So what can this do? It deals 7 damage divided as you choose among 1, 2, or 3 targets. If at least 7 red mana was spent to cast this spell instead, Sundering Stroke deals 7 damage to each of those permanents and or players. I can see that being a pretty common, pretty common uh, play there. You go Iron Crag Feet into Sundering Stroke, target... A uh, player, a creature, and a planeswalker, and just wipe them out entirely. Seven damage to everything. Oathsworn Knight, we've seen you, have we not? Yes, yeah, the Black Knight from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Okay, so we have seen him. Ardenville Tactician, I love that art. It kind of reminds me of the old uh, animated Hobbit, the way the artwork is done. Dizzying Swoop, 2 mana instant adventure, tap up to 2 target creatures, 3 mana 2 white, 2 3 flyer, human knight. Opportunistic dragon, this is the guy that dies to everything and gives them back their permanent immediately. <laughs> Not a fan of him. Version of the Veil, very cool, I like it. We've done him before in the basic card. Stolen by the Fey, full art. I like this card a lot. I mean, you bounce a four drop to hand for six mana and get four fairies out of it. I'm okay with that. Ayara, first of Lothwain, is her full art. It's looking pretty gruesome with the storm coming in the background and everything. I like it. She's kind of like uh, Maleficent with the hat and everything, too. Blackbridge Troll, stupid, strong, billy goat eaten, nasty thing. Goodness. Yes, we've seen him. We've seen him. Which is Vengeance. We've seen this one. This is another great board wipe, especially if you're up against a tribal deck. Idyllic Grange. This is the common plain land. ETB tap unless you control three or more other planes. When ETB's untapped, put a 1-1 counter on target creature you control. Very white uh, mana feel to that. Very white mana feel. Clockwork Servant, three mana gnome. I love gnomes. 2-3, adamant. If at least three mana of the same color was spent to cast it, you draw a card. That's amazing and limited. I like him a lot for that. I always like bottle gnomes and all that, so... Clockwork server makes me happy. 
Hinge Walker. Another Golem. We're definitely getting some Golems between M20 and this. Three mana, two, two. Golem with Adamant. Same color. Three of the same color. Enters with a one, one counter on it. So it can be a three, three for three. On, I mean, that's pretty on rate. That's what I expect for a Golem to be in general is a three, three, though. Uh, Fires of Invention. That sounds fun. Four mana enchantment. You can cast spells only during your turn, and you can cast no more than two spells each turn. You may cast spells with converted mana costs less than or equal to the number of lands you control without paying their mana costs. Oh my goodness. I love this card. I love this card so much. Two spells a turn for free, effectively. You can only play on your turn. I, I like this a lot. Oh my. You can do some fun stuff with that. Barter Cow. Four mana, three, three ox. When Bartered Cow dies, or when the you discard it, create a food token. Okay. Huh. White gets some discard protection. Um, I don't know, is this and Null Hide Ferox the only things that give you some discard protection in standard right now? It might be. Giant opportunity. Three mana, you may sacrifice two foods. If you do, create a 7-7 seven, seven green giant token. Otherwise, create three foods. Ha! Huh. So the first one of these you play may only get you the three food, but the second one you play is going to get you a 7-7 seven, seven for three mana. That's pretty cool. It's, uh... Sorcery speeds, so you can't do any funny tricks with it, but I do like it. I guess if you're running uh, three fairy, you could. Tall's a beanstalk. Four mana enchantment. Enchanted creature gets plus three, plus three, reach, and is a giant in addition to its other types. So it turns, it basically attacks hill giant with reach on top of anything that you put it on. That's cool. Ooh, another legendary. Torbren, Thane of Redfell. Three red, one colorless, two four, legendary dwarf noble. For red source you control, would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent. An opponent controls, it deals that much damage, plus two. Okay, so that's similar to um, the third uh, counter on Flames of Keld. It's similar to Jaya, Venerated, Fire Mages, or whatever her name is. The Uncommon Jaya from War of the Spark, her static ability. Good to have. Archon of Absolution, flying 3-2-4 mana Archon, prop white, creatures can't attack you, or planeswalker you control unless your control pays one for each of those creatures. I am going to be sleeving that up in so many decks. So, so many decks. Oh man, I w no image available, rough translation, millennium, confirmation and discussion. Let's click on confirmation and discussion. It's an uncommon. Okay. So that's pretty easy to get. Boom. Alright, let's back out. So we were on the Archon Absolution, so now we're on Drown the Lock. Blue black instant choose one target counter target spell with CMC less than or equal to the number of cards and its controller's graveyard. Destroy target creature. With converted mana cost, less than or equal to the number of cards in its controller's graveyard. So, definitely works in mill, definitely works in any kind of deck that's doing a lot of sacrificing, like an aristocrat's deck in standard. Works great in modern with fetches and all the stuff that, cheap removal and everything. Sorcerer Spyglass, this is the full art reprint, or full art of the reprint there. Ardenvel Paladin. 4 mana, 2, 5, Human Knight, Adamant, ETBs with a counter. Okay, not bad for common. Rally for the Throne, 3 mana instant, create 2 one, 1 white human tokens. If at least 3 white mana was spent to cast a spell, you gain 1 life for each creature you control. That's a pretty fun little, like, mini fog effect. You gain some life, and 
put out some dudes that's similar to the one that puts out Thopters, um, the split card in blue-white. Linden, the Steadfast Queen. We've seen that artwork, we just haven't seen her yet. Three white mana, human noble, three three, vigilant. Whenever a white creature you control attacks, you gain one life. That could definitely go into like the Johnny's Pride Mate and all that kind of deck there. Ugh. That's all they needed was more life gain. Cauldron's Gift, five mana, sorcery with adamant. Put the top four cards of your library into your graveyard with adamant trigger and then the main card text is you may choose a creature card in your graveyard if you do return it to the battlefield with an additional 1-1 one, one counter on it another reanimation spell at 5 mana uh, I still like giving haste with the bond better but it probably doesn't hurt to have a third decent reanimation spell forever young 2 mana sorcery put any number of target creature cards from your graveyard on top of your library draw a card that's pretty good if you're if you're like getting everything removed with board wipes and stuff against a control deck you can get all those creatures back in whatever order yeah and then draw the creature that's most relevant so you gotta resolve it but totally worth it if you are trying to bounce back from a board wipe Black Lance Paragon, that sounds awesome. Two mana, Human Knight, 3-1, Flash. When Black Lance Paragon enters the battlefield, target knight gains death touch and lifelink until end of turn. So this is our Dire Fleet Poisoner, but for knights. Okay. The lifelink edition is pretty cool. And it's a little bit stronger at a 3-1 instead of a 2-1. Um, but it doesn't have death touch natively to it like the Poisoner did. Cauldron of Eternity. Here, let's go where we can see the artwork. Ten, colorless, two black, legendary artifact, two less to cast for each creature card in your graveyard. Whenever a creature you control dies, put it on the bottom of its owner's library. Three mana, two colorless and black, tap, pay two life, return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Activate this ability only anytime you cast a sorcery. That's not bad. I think there's a lot better reanimation spells in Standard, but that's not bad. Um, maybe down the road it'll make more sense to have a permanent repeatable effect like this um, instead of just trying to bond out Dracoseth and smash in for as much damage as possible. Yorvo, Lord of the Garen Preserve. Three green, zero, zero. Legendary creature... I want to say it's probably an elf. IGN, that's a rough translation. Uh, it looks like a dwarf or a giant. It's a giant, okay. Yorvo the giant. Enters the battlefield with four 1-1 counters on it. Whenever another green creature ETBs under your control, put a 1-1 counter on it. Yorvo then... If that creature's power is greater than Yorvo's power, put an additional one counter on it. Yorvo. Yorvo, Yorvo. Alright, let's see. I'm not very good with foreign languages, but let me see if I can understand a little bit more about this guy here. Uh, da -da -dum. Enters the battlefield with four counters, one one. Yeah, okay, so they got it. I don't know why they had the extra Yorvo down at the bottom. Let's see if Google Translate. Yeah, okay. I guess it's uh, Spanish. Yeah. That's cool. Alright. Overwhelmed Apprentice. Is this Mickey <laughs> from uh, Fantasia? Nah, of course not. One mana, one two, human wizard. Although I wouldn't be surprised if Disney eventually buys magic. They're buying everything. When Overwhelmed Apprentice enters the battlefield, each opponent puts the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. Then you scry two. Wow. That's insane. 
the closest thing I can think of that is like that would be Omen Speaker, which is what, a 1 3 when it enters the battlefield, lets you scry 2. This lets you mill, it has a 1 less point of toughness, but you still get to do the scry 2. It seems good, especially for a 1 drop. Especially like in those situations where they keep a subpar hand after they mulligan and you mill them like right past all the lands that they're going to need to play stuff on curve and all that. I like it a lot. Sir Allen, the Lion's Claw. Three colorless, two white, four four, legendary human knight, uncommon. First strike, Sir Allen, the Lion's Claw attacks. Other creatures you control get 1-1 one, one until end of turn. Well, uncommon value knight at a high CMC. Sorcerer's Broom. See, I'm telling you, Monk, like Mickey Mouse is not going to be happy. we got the Overwhelmed Apprentice and the Sorcerer's Broom. He's going to come in here with his wand and his orchestra. Two mana artifact creature spirit, 2-1. Whenever you sacrifice another permanent, you may pay three. If you do, create a token that's a copy of Sorcerer's Broom. So, extra value for sacrifice decks. Um, plus, it gives you more creatures that you can sacrifice with Priest of Forgotten Gods and all that, too. I think people are going to be putting that into their Aristocrats deck. Bone Crush a Giant. I like this guy. This artwork is pretty sweet. This is the fancy folio. Full art. Magic Mirror full art is gorgeous. Look at that. The way that they've got the, you know, spectrum of light just cascading down off the mirror is just gorgeous. Vantress Gargoyle. That dude is kind of scary. Dance of the Mance. Fires of Invention. We've got some great spoilers, and we've got more to go, too. It's still a few weeks out from us uh, from us actually getting to pre-release with the set. I'm looking forward to this pre-release. I was really hoping for, like, a Kaldheim or something, but I'll, I'll hold on hope in the future that we'll get to Kaldheim. Let's refresh, make sure we're not missing any. Nope, I'm not missing any. Well, this is Logrith. Thank you for stopping by. Like, share, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed the content. Um, happy magicking, everyone.